So this is, what, Wednesday? Heading to Juno. Princess Cruises. We're gonna dock someplace. It's not raining at least. Docking interested me. It's basically parallel parking a hotel. They calculate angle, speed, wind, where they need to start the turn. Then hopefully these behemoths just slide alongside the dock, if they get it right. If they get it wrong, well, they just watch it crash into the dock. We didn't crash into the dock, so I guess someone on the bridge got their math right. Yeah, so he's keeping the back end of this around. I feel like we're moving. It sounds like I'm standing right above the stern thrusters. Maybe I was. They were certainly displacing a lot of water to get this ship turned around. It was making a very slow 180 so it could get lined up with the dock. Okay, so now that he's done a U-turn and turned the ship around, now all he has to do is go sideways into that dock right there. We got off the ship and there was the usual festive atmosphere on the wharf. Lots of excursion companies picking up customers, lots of people not knowing what they wanted to do, and lots of people deciding which jewelry store to go to first. We had lots of time and found our company rep easily. Then we hopped in the van and were off to the airport. <laughs> The van dropped us at a modular building in the airport and inside we locked up our bags and were fitted with spiked overshoes. Then we awaited further instruction. The aircraft when it gets loud. So number one is going to be Mark. Um, no number two. Number three is going to be Charlene. Number four is going to be Jim. No number five. And number six is going to be Trisha. Okay. And then Jim. Jim, we're going to be up front with our pilot Chris today. And so being up, being up front, you have a few more rules to follow. The first one is to make sure you don't touch any buttons, don't turn any dials. <laughs> and then if you if you drop anything, like this, I got this. let your pilot know and he will let you know if it's safe to go. And then the seatbelt up front is going to go over your shoulders around your waist, but I'll help you get your seatbelt on. The rest of the seatbelts are like regular car seatbelts, they just have the airline buckle on the end.
That's not rock all the way down over there either, huh? 
This right here? Yeah. It's moraine. This is the moraine that uh, comes down from the top where the two, uh, the west and the east branch come together. Uh -huh. They scrape the granite mountain and they bring all this rock with it. Wow. This is the Red Dog Saloon with a collection of memorabilia. It's colorful and a tourist attraction. Yes, that's sand on the floor. It dates to Juno's mining era and has been moved to three different locations in Juno. It has a gun that was apparently owned by Wyatt Earp. He checked it but never claimed it. They have a gift shop and a Facebook page. In 1880, gold was discovered in the Quartz District of Juneau by Richard Harris and Joseph Juneau. Gold was later found on Douglas Island and was mined there till 1917. Smaller operations continued into 1960. This is the Mount Roberts Tram. It has hiking trails at the top and a nice view, but it was a bit cloudy the day we were there, so the views may have been obscured. Instead, we took the blue bus. We went to the Mendenhall Glacier in the Tongass National Forest. The bus ride is narrated, and our driver was quite the comic. It was fun. The glacier is part of the Juneau Ice Fields. The U.S. Forest Service operates a visitor center. There are trails, and Jim and I took the one mile trail to Nugget Falls. Yeah, so this is one of those things that you really have to see in, in real life because it's it's pretty spectacular to be standing here. This is Nugget Falls. And all the million people. 